Hello everyone and welcome to Forkmaster's vlog for the Warhammer for the Fast and Gaming System here at Games Workshop based in the UK and welcome to episode 81 of this vlog today I'm going to take a closer look at the new version of Araman the Exile and his prodigal sons if you look back uh, 20 episodes to episode 61 you will know that I already did an Araman model of my own but uh, during the, the summer of 2018, up until the summer of 2019, I had the opportunity to paint another guy's models as a part of a painting commission that... Yeah, he, he paid me to paint his models more or less. And so that's why I felt that I was going to do a new video where I showed you my new take on Araman, especially now that he has a new model that has come out. But we can go into his background biography first. Asig Araman is a Terran who was inducted into the 15th Legionis Astartes, which was later dubbed the Thousand Sons. The Legion it got its name from when the Emperor and Magnus the Red was in communion with each other before their reunion. The Legion was struck by a horrible genetic disease called the Flesh Change, which not only took the life of Araman's real-life twin brother, but also most of the Legion. So barely a thousand of them remained when it got to Prospero. It is hinted that Magnus the Red struck a deal with the powers of the warp more closely that of Sench and sacrificed his right eye, which parallels a lot with the story of Odin in Old Norse mythology. The flesh chains was haltered and remains as one of the Legion's deepest secrets. Araman would steadily rise to have the dual role of both chief librarian, first captain over the first fellowship, and chief of the Primarch's bodyguard, the Sekment, or also known as the Scarab Occult. A fellowship was, according to the A Thousand Sons novel, roughly the size of a modern day chapter, consisting of 1000 Astartes, but with the new background lore, I would say that it's more likely closer to that of 10,000 Thousand Sons actually inside a fellowship. The Legion will go out and seek out all known knowledge as they obsessed over everything that is lost. It would sooner lead them that they would dabble with forces they couldn't control, which would give them the dire eye of the other Primarchs and the Emperor himself. After a confrontation with Lima Russ during a joint operation which would lead to open civil war between the Legions, he simply had enough. The Emperor gathered representatives from across the Legions at, at the planet of Nikea, where it would be decided what to do with the Librarius. Officially, as uh, it was a decree of the Imperium, it was actually the censorship of Magnus and his legion who returned back to Prospero as a whole with a broken spirit. Magnus wouldn't let it go and foresaw the fall of Horus at the hands of the wordbearers. By the ways of magic, he would travel in spirit through the Imperium to the Imperial Palace and warn the Emperor. The Emperor's powers would hold off Magnus' spirit for almost two years, and when his spirit would penetrate the wardens in the palace, it would already be too late. Horus would have struck his blows both at Istuan 3 and 5, a Primarch would be dead and the Imperium would be in civil war. For Magnus though, it, it would still be in its infancy as the logic of time doesn't apply inside the warp. Horus would have changed Lima Ross' orders in to instead of bringing him back to Terra for questioning, he would instead, instead lay, lay waste to his planet and leave no survivors. In that way, Horus would get rid of two loyalist legions in one strike. Before even Istvan V had begun, the six legioness Astartes of the Space Wolves would go in full force and start the sacking of Prospero. Magnus dispersed his fleet and blinded his sons from ever seeing it coming. He was broken as he had ruptured the wardens of the Imperial Palace and left it vulnerable to demonic intrusion. When the wolves finally came, the thousand sons rallied in a last stand and as Magnus first saw his sons being slaughtered, he couldn't hold back anymore. He wanted to come face to face with Lima Russ in a duel that would lead into him breaking Magnus' back. Seemingly defeated, the Magnus called out for help and through assistance of Sench, that as accepted his call, transported his legion and much of the planet's structure away to a planet which got its name Sortiatius, the planet of sorcerers. This was destiny as they had from the beginning been connected slaves to the changer of ways. On the planet they would rebuild once again. Magnus, now an energy entity with no physical body, would move away from his legion for bigger concerns. He would search to see which side he would choose, as the Imperium had cast him out and thought of them as traitors already, 
but he, he didn't want to join with Horus. As the Primarch would become ever more distant from his legion, the Flesh Chain would return and plague their legion. Magnus couldn't be bothered, but Araman couldn't stand aside and just watch. He would gather a cabal of the strongest sorcerers in the legion and perform a spell called the Rubric of Araman. It halted the effect of the Flesh Chains, but at a terrible price. The sorcerers of the legion would grow ever in power, but the regular non-psychic Astartes would be forever locked inside their armor with their souls trapped inside, the bodies reduced to dust and all free will forever lost. They would be walking statues. Magnus, who had before all the forbidden armor for pursuing this, was furious and outraged. As he would strike down those who ignored his command, Sench himself interfered and said that this was his plan all along. As I imagine Stench is unpredictable, it knew his followers wouldn't last long without mutation, so this would be the only solution to keep them intact. So then Araman and his Cabal was exiled from the planet and was forced to find the true understanding of Stench. For a long time he would hide inside warbands until Amon's warband, the Brotherhood of Dust, would force his hand. After killing Amon and absorbing his forces, he would start his own band called the Prodigal Sons. He would acquire the lost writings of Mahavastu Kalimachus, the scribe of Magnus during the heresy. With it he would try and evoke the rubric spell a second time, which would largely be unsuccessful, with the exception that a singular rubric marine is turned back to a regular human. In the present day he would be seeking out the black library of the Elder Harlequin, which contained amounts of knowledge that would let Araman rise the power of a chaos god. His plans are however foiled by Inquisitor Bronislav Sevak. So Araman, during the Great Crusade and Heresy, he would bear the red armor of his legion. After the burning of Prospero, he would develop two longer horns on his helmet, prophesizing his future appearance. After the defeat of Aman, who would get his iconic sixth horn helmet as we see here on this model, and begin to wear the blue armor of his now traditional legion colors. His black staff, as you also can see on this model, uh, has the horns of a demon prince called Vadhakor the An Annihilator, a stone from the ruins of Tiska, the last city of Prospero, and yeah, you can read the rest for yourself in his uh, biography. So, we can just take a closer look at the models. So, here we have one of the exalted sorcerers on a flying disc of Stench. Ready, um, what's really cool about this model is that, uh, let's see if we can get the proper is that uh, he has three arms that stretching out from his regular body that are actually in fact pink horrors of Sench, that's uh, the same type of armor. So he is more or less either, either possessed or the, he has help from pink horror in that way, that, uh, summoning spells and such. The one over here, he is flying with some uh, warp dust uh, lifting him up from his base. And this one is uh, ready to throw away some spell. And here in the middle we have the great man himself, Araman. And I must say, I really love this new model. He was in desperate need for an update. And I think this was the perfect model to do so. And he's huge and he commands presence. And yeah, he has have nice details. So yeah, so that's more or less everything I had for this part of the episode. Thank you much for watching it, and see. You. Thank you much for watching this episode. See you around, everybody. Bye bye. this yourself. It's extremely